Hi guys, welcome back to WAT in the Watford Fan Channel. Today we're going to be reacting to Watford's 2-1 win over Brentford at Griffin Park this afternoon. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it outside or inside the stadium um, due to it just being absolutely so, it's so cramped at Griffin Park. We I got to the game a little bit late. Um, it was about 15 minutes, 20 minutes into kickoff because we were all kind of funneled into one area. Um, it was all it was take forever to get in and that was obviously because of pound the day um, and I don't think Brentford really expected that many Watford fans to, to come to Griffin Park and touch on that first I think the Watford fan support today was absolutely phenomenal sold out completely uh, the bottom tier was really really loud the top tier was was less loud but the, the atmosphere created from the bottom tier was absolutely fantastic um, really really good from all concern and I think Watford have Done fan well. I mean, the Stevenage game yesterday. Everyone thought it was going to be an under twenty three game, and the atmosphere was good there. But the, the the fans took it to the next level today. I thought they were absolutely fantastic, um, and really kind of created into a league game. There was there was there was moments I didn't really thought it, think it was a pre season game the way um, the, the the fans were, were were that loud. So I think it was absolutely fantastic from Watford today. Um, in terms of on the pitch, now obviously I said I got there a little bit late, but uh, from what I've been reading. Um, obviously, we conceded first inside four minutes. Uh, it was from a free kick, and then Ollie Watkins, uh, well, Ben Foster saved it, um, and then Ollie Watkins got in on the rebound. So I can't really say a lot about our defending for that goal, um, but obviously, not a good start, and to start quite slowly, I guess, um, within inside four minutes isn't great. But what has pleased a lot of fans is the response. Um, Watford did come back in that first half, um, scoring two goals, really. Uh, the the first of which was an own goal. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was one of the best own goals you ever see. He sliced it into his own net. Pereira sent the defender for a postcard, forced a save from Bentley, um, and I think the defender tried to clear it, and he sliced it into his own net, which was just incredible. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that, that kind of own goal anyway. Um, and then it was another kind of defensive error for Brentford. The keeper, um, it was intercepted by Andre Gray, and he, he, had, he had a tap in. So I think overall... It's kind of, whether it's enforced errors or it's unforced, I'm not too sure. Um, I don't think they're, they're, they're great goals, but in terms of Andre Gray's confidence, it's going to be sky high at the minute. He scored three out of his last four pre-season games. He looks a really, really good nick. Um, and he's making a real claim to Gracia that he's the man for the job this season One up in a one-up top formation. Um, I think that was always a concern from Watford fans, that Andre Gray, is he the man to lead us forward going into the new season? Um and he's giving Grassi a headache. So I think the, the the stat three goals in his last four preseason friendly says it all, really. Um, let's see what you guys think. Um, so yeah, I've got the chat in for this time. I know a lot of people were were wanting it. 
Um, unbeaten pre-season yet. Very, very happy with that. We will finish top 10 defo. I'm not sure about definitely, but hopefully. Um, I think the signs that Watford have got a solid squad. I think they're a lot worse teams than, than us in the league. Um, I think we do need to bring in a couple more players personally. I think the depth is lacking a little bit. Um, the likes of Chalaber, Decore, Delafeu aren't in the squad, and that is don't don't worry about it. They that's due to injury. Um, at the minute they that they they pick up knocks. I remember obviously Chalaber came back on the last game of the season, so Grassi doesn't want to risk him over this preseason. Decore is a bit of a weird one because all, with all the speculation that surrounds Decore, especially towards towards the start of the window, um. Yeah, it's a little bit frustrating not to see him in a Watford shirt, and it did get a lot of fans panicking, but I think Grassi has kind of cleared the air saying that he is injured. And then Gerard Delafay was also um, picked up a little nigger, what if you remember, after the Chelsea game, and it kind of went a little bit downhill. Um, he didn't play that many games, actually. I think it was only four games, and then he came back for the United game in the last game of the season. Um, so Grassi, I think, is being a little bit tentative because of that. He doesn't want them to pick up another injury ahead of the new season. He thinks they're probably able to adapt and that's the, also a bit of a worrying thing that they won't have any minutes. I'm hoping that they're going to be back for the Sampdoria game um, just to get some minutes ahead of the Brighton game the week after. Um, right, so we've got, let's have a look at a little look at the stream. But as I said, the first half was was pretty good. We looked fresh and we looked lively. I thought Andre Gray did look very lively up front. He was making some good runs in behind. I thought Pereira looked good. Um, I thought... Yeah, I thought in the middle we looked comfortable as well. Um, Kapu and Ashley Charles were really good on the ball and just looked confident in the midfield. Um, but yeah, not really a lot to report. Also, Ben Foster, um, good to see the new chant. He's coming home. But also the fact he could distribute the ball off both feet. That was a notable feature of the first half and the second half. I thought Foster showed what we what we paid the £3 million for. And if not, a little bit, a bit better than that, to be honest with you. Looked very quick off his line. Great distribution. Uh, made some, some comfortable saves. So it all, it all in all, a solid performance from Ben um, in his first outing back in England. Obviously, he played out in uh, in Austria. But no, I think, um, yeah, the signs there at Watford are looking good going into the new season. I think the Sampdoria game next week is a real sign of how well we're doing under Grassi. We're unbeaten so far, which is a, is a, is a good sign. Um and I think, yeah, I just think Watford are looking good. And I think Gracia knows his strongest team. I think he's playing a mixture but mixture with the under-23s. But the under-23s that he has brought in, the Alex Yakubiak and uh, Ashley Charles haven't looked out of place. And I think they maybe could feature in the Cup this season, maybe in the League Cup or the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. So um, I like that blend from Gracia, the experience with a little bit of youth, but not too much where it becomes more of an under-23 under fixture pun. Um Let's look at the comments. So, is there an ice cream van? Yeah, there is outside. Um, yeah, I think we need do need another striker. Uh, what's the rumours about Paco Alcacer? Now, it doesn't relate to the Brentford game today, but rumours have it that Watford have been in contact with Paco Alcacer over a possible move, but he's wanting a move to stay in La Liga, um, and he's seeing if Rodrigo leaves. I believe he is at Valencia um, and go back to his former club. So, that's the kind of rumours surrounding Paco Alcacer. If Rodrigo does stay... I think Alcacer could be on his way to Watford, um, but he's want, he wants to stay in La Liga for, well, I mean, he's probably settled in Spain as a, as a Spanish international. So, um, yeah, I think that one really does depend on other events out of Watford's control. Uh, where do you think you lot will come this season? I think we'll get top half. I think 12th, 11th would be fantastic. I think maybe even top 10 if we can get that. Um, but just building on last season, really, it was a... <clears throat> it was a disappointing end to last season. I think if Watford can build on that, the the league status last season, I think it'll be a, a good result. Um, we're linked with a Mexican defender. Yeah, I'm not too sure how concrete that is. Do you think Ben Wilmot should be in the starting eleven in the league? I don't think he should be in the starting eleven. But what I do really like about when Ben Wilmot is that we are giving him a chance. I think he will feature it prominently in the cup competitions. Um, sorry, I got a bit of cold. Um, but with Ben. I think, um, yeah, he's technically fantastic. He's a centre-back by trade, can play defence in midfield, and just looks really, really good on the ball. Um, something which I didn't expect. I didn't think he can transition from a centre-back to a defensive midfielder really, really well. Um, and he's spraying the passes across the midfield. Him and Jack Rodwell look like a solid combo. Um, I think Gray plays more confident when he's not under pressure. Do you think? Yeah, I do think that. I think Andre Gray is someone who, when the pressure's on, he... 
kind of hides a bit. And that's understandable when there's a lot of pressure on a striker to score. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't always go well. But as we've seen in these pre-season games, when he's had a little bit more time and space and a little bit more relaxed, you see he's got, he has got quality. Um, so if he can take that form from pre-season, his confidence is going to be, at, well, sky high at the minute. Um, if he could take that form into the start of the season, I think he could have a successful campaign. I think Gray needs to target around 15 goals this season um, to really kind of pay, prove the, the doubters wrong and, and prove that the 18 million price tag is worthwhile and, and is justified. But yeah, he has, I think he has to be getting around 15 goals this season. Um, opinions on Jack Rodwell. Yeah, I think it all but confirmed, I think, with Jack Rodwell. I don't think he'd be playing in these pre-season games um, if he wasn't going to be involved. The fact he started yesterday and then he came on for the second half or around 60 minutes. I think Jack Rodwell is going to feature this season. I think it's back up for Tom Cleverley. Tom Cleverley obviously has been out recently and is out till... Well, he's going to miss the start of the season anyway with an Achilles injury, which he said... He's had throughout his career, it's finally now he's getting it sorted. He's played through games with pain um, and an injury. So Jack Rodwell, I think, is going to provide cover while Cleverley's out injured. But yeah, I don't really see, if it's on a free, I don't really see the massive issue with it. It's just where, how much he is going to be on. I don't want him to be on 70 grand a week like he was at Sunderland. I think he'd be one of our most played players and similar to the Corey. So don't think that would be uh, a good move if the wages are, 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 are that excessive. What do you reckon will happen with Troy? I think he'll be second choice. I think Grassier does prefer Andre Gray. I think he'll stay for another season. Yeah, I think Andre Gray will. Um, and hopefully he does, as I said, score 15 goals. But looking at today, thanks for the question and speaking in the chat. Hopefully that's a cool little feature on the side. So if you want me to continue with that, then let me know. Um, but looking at today, we've got one more pre-season game at Sampdoria next Saturday, well, in a Vicarage Road for the Graham Taylor match day, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, number one, it's our last pre-season game before the Brighton game, so we'll get to see how the squad are and if they're they're fit and, 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 and ready to go um, for the week after. But also the unveiling of the Graham Taylor statue, which will be an absolutely fantastic occasion. So make sure you do get yourself down there early um, to see the unveiling of the Graham Taylor statue. I think it's going to be outside the club shop um, prior to kick-off. So, yeah, no, I think really good signs coming out of pre-season. I think we do look sharp, especially up front. Um, it's always been a worry with Watford fans whether we can bring the form in from pre-season into the the full season. We have looked sloppy at times in pre-season, especially in recent years. I remember under Matt Sorry, we looked really poor. So as I said, take this form into the 18-19 campaign. See what we can do under Javi Gracia in his full season as Watford head coach. Um, and hopefully could stay till the end of the season. I don't want another silver saga. I don't think that will happen. But I think Gracia has is clearly wants to play one up top. If we can get Andre Gray to play that formation, if we can keep Pereira on the left, if we can get Ken Semmer, who I think has looked really good, Isaac Success, raring to go. Also, Will Hughes in the middle. We've got Jack, uh, Jack Rodell, Etienne Capu, sorry. Um, we've got Chalibur, Decore, Delafeu. When these players do come back, we've obviously got Mark Navarro and Messina, our new fullbacks. Fullbacks is a really strong area for Watford. So if we could keep our players fit, that is going to be a massive factor as well. But if we could keep our players fit, get them ready for Brighton at home on the first day of the season, we could have a successful campaign because the fixture list is pretty nice to us. We have a good start and a good end. So if we go into the season well, like we normally do, then I think it could be a really successful season under Javi Gracia. Let me know what you think. Um, and your expectation for this season, where do you think Watford will finish? Um, hopefully I can see some of you at the Sampdoria game. Thank you to everyone who said hello today. Um, and then I'll catch you in the next video in the week for some more transfer news, looking ahead to the Sampdoria game and the new season. Thanks for watching. As I said, remember to leave a like, subscribe, WD18, and don't forget to comment as always. And I'll see you in the next one.